Like I don't have money to fight now. You have no money to fight. So now I go back away to my girlfriend. <laughs> then I ask her for money. She's like she doesn't have. She has like 139 rand, right? So I'm like, nah. Just fund that money into my account. Started trading it. Uh, mind you, that 139 rand. Um, I took it to 100k in a day. No ways. No from, ways. From 2 a.m. till 9 a.m. So we went to like three different dealerships, right? That same day. Same day with maps. The, 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 the salesperson is also persuading me to operate. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to get this car. So that in my head, day. I'm like, ah, I'm going to be too much and I go back to rest. <laughs> Don't talk. At first, it's a scam to everyone. But like, if you keep on pushing, like, even if you blow, no matter how many times you blow, keep on finding that account. Hey, what's up traders? So today we're literally linking up with our boy Peace Finisher. Forex Trader has been trading for a few months, but we're gonna share with his story. You, we're gonna share the story, you know, on the channel to an interview. How are you, poison? Yes. This brute? Hey, in profits, dog. This thing's spiking. This what's thing going on? like on 11,000. Nice and like, because I, I was holding it for you, but then for Ish. today so far we made like 26,000. For today, 26K. Yeah, and it's a lot Just today. Account. So wait, just. Wait. Yeah. Live Let's account. Show them the history there. The history. Oh, for today. Yeah. For today. That's today. Go down, down. Up, up. Are profits. Clean, bro. I don't close losses, eh? And yeah. So you're saying it was at 11K right now? Yeah, it was 11 right here when I said I'm into profit. Because I can see the spike, you know? But I'm still holding till CP. Like I mean, I mean, it's been a while though, man. How are you, boys? And I see baby finisher there. Hey, you man. bought a young band. I'm trying, eh? <laughs> you trying? I'm trying. Okay, right, guys, so we're gonna sit down with Peace Finisher. Uh, we're gonna talk, we're gonna chop it up as the gents talk about trading. Talk about your journey, because, bro, a few months ago, when I first met you, it wasn't like this. Let's be honest. Hey, I was still pushing the YouTube level. <laughs> <laughs> but, guys, we're gonna sit down. I hope you guys enjoy this type of content. Let's vibe out, man. Hey, what's up, traders? So, we literally just touched down the Peace Finisher office. You know, the boy you guys saw outside, he was holding trades, but now they're back into profit. Boys, and show them the screen, bro. This is screen record for the people. Uh, this account is now floating on 10,000. 10,000 rand. It's about Just for the day. And then it's a real account. And yeah. the other one, because I trade two accounts at once. Yeah. So this side you floating balance of forty thousand and then you're holding eight thousand rand right now. This is clean, bro. And let me just I don't like changing people my outcome. So far today it's on like six thousand. Six thousand rand. Yeah. Now nah, that's clean, bro. So we're gonna get into the interview, but before we get into the interview, for a day in the life, nah, how how many likes should they give you? Um, for the interview. So we're gonna do an interview now. How many likes should they give you? Uh, let's say. For today, uh, <laughs> you know this is YouTube. Bro. Yeah, let's say 20,000. 20, 20,000 20, likes for a day in a life. Yeah. You know, and he said you made your first million in how long? In my second month. Second month trading. Yeah. And you've been trading for seven months. This is my seven month. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, so we're gonna get uh, trading for a bit, and then we're gonna get into the interview. But let's not waste time. Let's get into the interview. Look, you're recording, eh? Yeah, I'm just gonna record. Hey, man, we're literally about to set up for the interview. And Two I'll minutes later, it's at 20k, bro. You're about to close. Let me just go with bulk up. Right? So, guys, he's closing 20k now, so make sure that 46 for the day. Also, this one, I'm closing it on 18. 18 bands. Hey man, it's crazy. Let's get rolling. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> Guys, it's possible just like that, you know? So like in total, let me just quickly check. Uh... Hey man, it's crazy. So, so on this one, there's 46,000. 46,000. So just edit 46 plus. 46 plus. Uh, today's profit 24. of 24K. Great. That's like 70. If I'm not mistaken. Give me a few seconds. 25, let's say 25k go to, plus. Yeah. yeah. Go to the other account. Mm, don't want to show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, so 46 plus 25, that's like 
70, around 70 yeah, k. Yeah, this is 69, 70, yeah. Now that's clean, guys. Let's yeah. get into it. Hey, man, it's possible. 20 k likes, because you saw you just closed 20 k. So let's set up and get into the interview. Hey, what's up, traders? Welcome back to Traders Room South Africa, the best trading channel in the country. You know, on today's video, uh, you guys asked me to bring back the interview series. You know, there have been a lot of comments. You guys are asking me, yo, Lebza, we want to see traders come onto the channel and share their journey because I know that you are all motivated by people's journeys. Uh, we're all different in, in the markets, you know. But uh, on today's um, interview, we have a special guest, you know. I met this kid. Um, <laughs> don't laugh, man. I met this kid like, dog, when I met you, bro, you weren't even doing this trading stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to introduce, um, he's an entrepreneur, he's a hustler. When I met him, bro, like he's always keen to learn new things, man. So we have the boy Peace Finisher on today's episode, man. How are you? I'm good, bro. How are you? How are you doing? Hey, man, I'm, I'm really chilled, man. I'm, I'm excited to actually interview you because, yeah, man, there's a lot to talk about, bro. So first things first, I wanted to find out... For those people who don't know you, who are you? Where, where are you from? You know, who's Peace Finisher, man? Um, so I'm Peace Finisher all the way back from Limpopo you get. Yeah. I hear people saying that most traders come from Limpopo and yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I'm there. I'm also in the industry now. I don't know if I'm that up there or I'm still down there, but yeah. And uh, yeah. I'm an entrepreneur. I can say I'm a trader. Yes. Yeah. I also do some other things, which I won't say on the. You get. But yeah. And for now, I'm a trader. You're yeah. a trader. Yeah. Hey Amen. So, who's peace finisher before trading? You know how was like. Take me to way back. How did you grow up? You know, did you grow up from a good home? Because there are some traders, you know, who they come from good homes or they have a good background, and then, you know, how's your background? Uh, I would say my background is, it's not like it's a good background, right? Yeah. In a sense that, like, I would get anything that I want. Yeah. But to a point that when I came into the industry, when I saw myself making money, I came to a point that I wasn't getting any allowance from my parents. I told them that they shouldn't give me anything. I should, like, just do everything on my own, even if it's tough or if it goes. Yeah. Be my support. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, when I made Peace Finisher, he DM'd me, you know, at that time he was still doing YouTube. You know, Peace, like, yo, bro, he used to keep um, DMing people, always keen to learn how to become a YouTuber. And he was actually at university. So uh, you came to Joburg. I heard you from Limpopo. So how did you come to this side? What did you come for? And yeah. Well, I came for, I was doing YouTube by then. So yeah. I came for school and also YouTube. Like I had a vision, like on YouTube. Like yeah. something like million subscribers. That's what I was seeing myself <laughs> getting to. Yeah. And then yeah, things happened there. Eh? <laughs> what happened on YouTube? Nah, like I was pushing YouTube, but then there's a day that like I was coming from school, right? Yeah. So I lost my MacBook and my phone. Yeah. Right. So from that day I couldn't operate any content. Came to a point that um I was like, nah, I lost this like my phone, my, my Your phone valuables. and my MacBook and I was like calculating how much it was. So in a sense that like my parents didn't take too long to get me a phone. Right? Yeah. So they got me a phone like two days after. Right. But the momentum for like YouTube was gone because in those there was my content and my iCloud was only picked up around like 28 February. Yeah. So I was like, nah, I recorded all this. I spent a lot of money going to Shoots. places like Headfield, shooting these videos. And now it got gone. lost in... Because someone stole it. Yeah, and also, like, my circle, like, people that I was around, like, most of the times were, like, traders. Yeah. So I'd see them, would go to clubs, like, pop bottles, right? Yeah. You get. So, like, yeah. I mean, maybe I can make money from that. So I asked a friend, a trader, to, to teach me. I won't say the name, right? Yeah. And he charged me. I was like, this guy is charging me. Like, come on, I'm his boy. Like, He's, come on. You so guys are That's close. when I came to a point that I was like, let me just research on this thing. Uh, FX started doing my researches, right? Also, joining Telegram groups on 
on like yeah telegram groups like people that i don't through instagram like, through search, youtube yeah if i see someone trading gold i see someone is making like 15k from gold yeah i've gone uh telegram search gold yeah and see those groups and see how people are sending those signals obviously those signals are not 100 percent accurate but i was using them here and there here and there yeah i was using them on like demos that's what, that was like in june right yeah then july i was like let me actually what i got my allowance you got your allowance let me actually so take my allowance all of it right you see now there's a forex trader making a noise that side <laughs> but it's cool so yeah. i was like let me take my allowance right all yeah. of it and put it into fx since i was seeing myself making hundred thousands on demos so i put all my allowance there mind you like you, the time that we met you knew that like i didn't have pots or anything like oh, I yeah buy food every day so yeah man so let's go back now so i met you around feb you know while you were doing content feb march april throughout those months you were doing youtube so um let's backtrack a bit so you learned through you learned about forex through the traders you were chilling around you know uh now like how do you first find out about forex about forex yeah i only found out about forex when a friend of mine uh Garabo rich forever yeah uh, showed me like his profits so yeah it's like nah this guy is actually making money but i was not i was like nah this thing is a scam these guys are lying to us like <laughs> this is not real money he gets so, so you thought it was a scam all i thought along. it was a scam like it was a scam to me but when i lost my phone that's when i was like nah let me try this scam maybe it actually works right oh okay. so when i started uh i started the demos right because i was teaching myself yeah right? then towards a uh, month end of to june right mm. it's when i got my allowance and i was like nah let me actually put all my allowance there right? how much was your allowance hey man <laughs> it was not that much it wasn't that I, much but yeah. you funded it into a you so you opened a real account and then you you funded into a forex account so yeah. who helped you register you just did it on your own uh rich forever helped me to register okay cool yeah. then i funded my allowance there right so i blew like i blew on my first trade right with the real money i blew my yeah. whole allowance. how much was how much did you blow <laughs> i saved my whole allowance yeah. yeah he won't say his allowance it's cool yeah. it's cool so i blew i blew that money right after yeah. blowing that money like it's the first day of the month mm. right i don't like i can't call home and say i don't have money they'll ask me where did the money go yeah i don't have money now at that time i'm on zero right but i still want to trade like i didn't want to <laughs> give up because i was like now nah, i made money on a demo i can still make money you can make day. money so now um like i had a girlfriend right yeah yeah, yeah it's I always can. the girlfriends who are willing to support traders when they know like bad like, you know yeah like i had a girlfriend um at a, like at a, at a, like we were on the same level you get like in, in terms, terms of, of like, like finance finances so like this is me i'm on zero but like she understood in a sense that i'm trading i'm trying to push this thing like for I the both of you vision that i can make money out of this thing mm. and she's on the side she's, she keeps on saying that i must do youtube but i'm <laughs> neglecting to do youtube because right? you lost all your content because your everything was stolen from you, you yeah know? so then she insisted of, on giving me like 5k yeah to trade but i was like nah i can't find that 5k at least give me like 300 rand Oh, just to test yeah, out, just you to know, because you blew and it was painful. Yeah, so this is when I started trading with 300 rands, making, doubling the account in like less than an hour. So I'm like, if I can double it, I can take it to, I can also double that money that I made. I so you can, throw. if you put in 300 and you've doubled it to six, that means you can yeah, also double that six. To, yeah, to, to 1.2. 1 1.2. Right? So I was pushing in that sense. Then I was like, nah, let me continue this. So when I made my first 10K, I didn't think of doubling it again. I withdrew. All you withdrew, and that 10k. Unfortunately, after making my first huge profit in forex, I yeah. took it to the club. All of yeah. It, so, uh, for those traders who are new, you know, um, so you were one month into trading demo, and then because you said mm, you were. We can say, we can you say like two weeks into demo. Oh, so you're trading demo for two weeks, yeah. and then you're like, "Hey, man, I want the real thing. You got your allowance. You funded. You blew." So how long did it take you to push that first 300 rand to 10k? Now that 300 rand took me like three days. Three days? To get to 10k. Because I was doing that thing of like if I double that 300, yeah. doubling that amount. So I go to 10k, I withdraw all of it. <laughs> then, yeah, from there I made this other yeah. lady. 
So that 10K, I'd be uh. sorry to cut you off. Um, it took you three days and then you were through, like, go tell us about, like, how you felt opening your first trade or making that first profit, you know? How, how did it feel for you? Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember because it was not worth the money that I had lost, but I was, like, happy because yeah. I made money. You made money, yeah. yeah. You won't think about that money, like, but you, you, you'd be like, I got 10K, right? Yeah. So it's like that 10K, I'm going to spend it like I'm spending it same day. When it reflected into my account, I went out with the boys, Cherry, you guys have seen him on Lives on yeah. Black's channel. We went out, we blew all the money. Yeah. The following day, now I'm thinking, I'm like, I blew 10K now. Where is, like, I don't have money to find now. You have no money to find. So now I go back away to my girlfriend. <laughs> So you didn't even give her the first profit. Yeah, say, but then, listen, you, yeah, I, get, I go back with to my girlfriend, right? Yeah. At this time, I'm like, nah, I can double small accounts. Like, I'm too much. <laughs> then I ask her for money. She's like, she doesn't have, she has like 139 rand, right? Because it was towards me. Please repeat that again. She has like 139 rand account. <laughs> so I'm like, nah, just find that money into my account. Started trading it. Uh, mind you, that 139 rand. Um, I took it to 100k in a day. No ways. No from, ways. From 2 a.m. till 9 a.m. Like, no ways. Uh, if you can check, Maps Tosak knows this. Like he saw this happening. I took that money to 100k. 112. 112. I was shocked. So after making that Wait. 112. Wait. Sorry, yo. I've got to cut you off there, man. What What do you go through in your mind pushing 139 rand? What were you even trading? I was trading only gold. Only gold. Only gold. So you started off 139 rand. First trade took me to like 800 rand. Your then first trade. 18, 800 yeah. something rand. I went to like 9k. From nine, I went to 33. From 33, I entered full margin. Full margin. Because in my head, I was like, this is 139 rand. So like, I was not thinking about yeah. like, this is a huge amount. It was 139 rand to mm. me. So from 33k, I entered trades around to nine. Closed them at like past nine. It was 112. Okay, yeah. so you can continue because you know uh, the videos that I do create a lot of people You know some people don't believe that you can even push a small amount of money to a large sum You know when I do find 800 rand and take it to like 18k 15k people don't believe you know So you taking that 139 all the way to 100 like 100k plus, you know, so what did you do after that? So <clears throat> this is where like my senses got like, like I, I like I thought of my girlfriend, the one that like she only had one thirty nine, but she gave it to me. So her I last her, money. I dog. gave her like twenty five k, right? After giving her twenty five k, I left like uh, thirty thousand just for me to trade. Sent money back home to my mom. My, yeah. my mom doesn't need money from me. Like she she can maintain her own life. Like, yeah. Yeah, in a sense that she can give like all the kids at home like a huge allowance yeah but i sent money back home to my mom just to uh, say I thank also you sent to my dad yeah just to say thank you then from that 30k i was finding 10k 10k so this is the time when i was doubling 10ks i was making like 10k every day this is now beginning of what of of, um, of august now i'm yeah. doubling 10k 10k every day so your so first month yeah i'm making around seventy eight thousand in right? a week because i'm i'm targeting on doubling that ten thousand or doubling that fifteen thousand that's mm. Mm. okay yo you're speaking so many numbers man hey man can i ask you know because there's some people who started trading and this is all in a month like you say nah, two two months you know so there are some traders who've been trading for years and you know for them just to even grasp a few concepts you know it's so difficult so for, for you let's besides the money side let's talk about the time you're putting into the charts you know how long did it take you for you to to learn the skill, you know, and what type of uh, strategy were you using? What type of um, strategy were you using in the sense of like trading levels, trend lines, like break down that side of trading, like the technical part? So like uh, what I saw, right, there's a YouTube video that I saw from Kojo, right? Kojo Forex, yeah. the guy from Ghana. And you were saying that um, YouTube strategies that are on the internet, they do work, right? Mm. But it's not like they don't work in a sense. Because you can find someone is good with that strategy, but then they don't make money. 
they make money here and there they don't make that much reason being the market breakers they know that strategy gets yeah so like let's say we fund hundred thousand you find hundred rent like one million people find hundred and hundred and hundred and hundred yeah they're using technical al- analysis right then there's one there's 50 people that are funding uh fifty thousand right? yeah for instance right uh the market breakers are watching those people that are what are using like the same strategy you get yeah let's just say those uh one million people who were funded hundred rent yeah uh trading the technical analysis obviously the the market breakers they know that they're going to make more money from these people these hundred rent people because yeah. hundred rent times one million one million that's a lot of money right whereas you can say fifty thousand times twenty people that are trading with something that's just different from everyone else yeah right? so let's say those people see a buy i see a sell obviously the people that saw that sell are going to what lose yes. yeah so this is when i started combining strategies like smc tin analysis then also started putting my own things like things that i like just putting things like from just looking at the chart because i was looking at the chart like on my phone yeah i was trading with my phone just mm. my phone no so when you computer. made your first let's say 100k it was all from the phone you weren't even yeah. on trading because i only had a phone isn't it I, I lost my phone in june yeah my my macbook my laptop in june yeah so now i was just using my phone my phone just my mt4 phone. just MT4. no trading yeah. view so do you think you know on your side now i want to ask you a question do you think main it was like intuition that kind of helped you at first you know combined with the little knowledge you knew do you think it was like something telling you that hey man this market's gonna buy you know mixed with that technical stuff you knew or you know you do you think you had um perfected um technical trading within that period no i was not like i won't say i was a good trader by then right yeah in a sense that i would want to meet up because that's the time when like traders like which were around my circle wanted to be like around me so i'd also learn from what they're doing right yeah in the sense that i have my like i i, I view the market my own way right yeah and they have their own viewing with their uh, strategies that they use right so i'll check and see how they are like getting entries and all if i see that they're making profits i'll be like okay this is how they got like profits so yeah. i take the way i view the market and put it on oh, the side alone like after when i'm alone in my room right yeah or if i see that they're making losses i'll be like this is where they made a mistake oh so and you're learning through their so losses i was and learning from their mistakes and also from their <laughs> yeah i was learning 50 50 like both sides <laughs> from their winnings and also their losings nah so then yeah this is how i was operating and i was that trader like i wouldn't say i was good at that time yeah like on my second month of trading I was still learning in a sense that I'm that person when like people are coming to me you would get people saying when I grow up I want to be like you like before I even get anything through FX they just see my profits they're like I want to be like you so I got um, people that like I also taught and also they became better than me yeah but I kept on learning from where from the people from, that I, I taught yeah right you know one thing about you you know and one thing I've learned about peace finisher bro like you've always been someone who who wants to gain knowledge bro no matter whether someone's above you or below you like he hit me up he's like yo i'm trying to be a good youtuber please help me give me advice you know this guy makes money he even asked me your lives out you turn 800 rand to so you're always eager to learn you know yeah i'm always eager to learn because uh if you can check right now i have people that i i've like i've employed people yeah right? people don't know but i've employed people that i've taught yeah right? i've taught forex in a sense that i can teach someone the way i trade but then when i tell them that this is what i'm teaching you you must also go and research and be better than me mm. in a sense that people that i teach on my end if they give me a signal right i don't analyze i just enter for oh, the people you've taught yeah so you also I work with them i can people that i mentor i end up working with them mm. in a sense that i also pay them so those profits are not just going to me like i'm not enjoying those profits. i'm also enjoying them with my clients with your clients in a sense that when they blow i can also fund them mm. when yeah. they need it now yeah. that's clean bro so second month into trading you're starting to get a hang of trading and um where do you go from there you know because you you were saying that you kept making 70k consistently so from there where did your journey yeah because that's when i got also like i also got my black card on my second uh, on my third third month yeah third month i went to the bank 
I said I qualify. I got my black card, my first black card. Yo. So in three months, you know, you trading consistently. How much are you making per week? And like, uh, you, you still used to live at the student accommodation, eh? Okay. Per week. Yeah, per week. Our targets. I had a trader that I was looking up to. Right? Yeah. And Who he are you was targeting. At? Nah. Hey, man. Okay, yeah, you, you know can more friends say. like that, yeah. So I would look up to him. He'd like say his target is like twenty thousand. So I'd also say, nah, let me make mine twenty five thousand, right? In a, a week. week, yeah, a week. But I'd make more or make less sometimes, depending on how the market is moving. Because yeah. obviously I was not winning all the time. Mm. I only started winning like all the time, beginning of December. Beginning I only of started. Lo- I only lose like on events. On events. Yeah, like events. You know, like events. You might. Yeah, get trading. Gets. But on a normal trading day, I don't lose. You don't lose. Yeah. Yeah, man. So I remember, you know, there was a point. I think it was your third month trading. You had posted on your Instagram, and you were like, "Hey, guys, this is my third month of trading." And then you literally posted your bank um, account, and you're like, "You're saving up money for a car," you know. Yeah. So how did you make your first million? How did that video come about? You know. And the thought now that, process that behind video it. came came out like I only posted that video like two weeks after, because mm. I was also thinking I was like posting a million. I'm at a student res. If I'm out there, it's not safe. Yeah, you get. So, because eh. with that money, I wasn't going to get to like one point four, right? Yeah. Because there's a time that I wanted to buy an M4. I called uh, Maps. Yeah. Yeah. Like I look, I, I like I, I would look up to him because the way he was pushing is like the hustle. He's trading. Yeah, he's trading. It was so good in the sense that I was like, now nah, this guy is transparent, and like I can actually look up to this guy, right? Yeah, because there's most traders who just show lifestyle but actually don't trade, you know? Yeah. So this is the time I called Maps. I'm like Maps, boy, I want to buy a car. It's like. Are you serious? I'm like, yeah, he was at my student dress. Right? Yeah. But I, I didn't know like where. I only saw his car outside. Yeah. So I'm like, I want to buy a car. It's like, what car? I'm like, let's go to the dealership. I want an M4. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, I want an M4. So we went to like three different dealerships, right? That same day. Same day with maps. And shout out to him. Like, I didn't even pay for fuel. I didn't even pay for anything. Like, everything, food, it was on him. Like, yeah. Because I was buying a car. Like, it was also shocking. People, like, I'm buying a car in my second month. So, second or third? Second. Nah, towards month end of, uh, like, around 25 August. Oh, so the end of August. So you made your first million trading. No, no, that's not, that was not a million. Like, I only had, I checked on auto trader. The month that I had was for a good second hand M4, right? M4. And I was going to be on zero if i bought an m4 Ish. so when i got there <laughs> i'm seeing the m4 zero. i'm seeing the m4 and they also the people the, the salesperson is also persuading me to operate and i was like yeah i'm going to get this car so in my head i'm day. like ah, i'm going to be too much and i go back to res <laughs> <laughs> <Drop top. laughs> hey, so uh when i was there checking there i'm checking i'm like how am i going to maintain this how am i going to pour fuel for this because in my head i was like if i buy this I won't even have money to pour fuel. <laughs> you back to dealership. zero. When you leave the dealership, not even going home. When you leave the dealership, I'm like, nah, nah let me leave this thing. <laughs> so I was like, nah, let me leave this thing. Let me also add the man that I had. I was like, obviously, when you give, you get more blessings. Mm. That's the time when I started going live. Just asking like random questions. I give people money. I would spend like 12,000, 20,000. Yeah. Just giving out to people, giving people like On Instagram people that were supporting me. Like, yeah, yeah. give them money yeah right. so you know let me ask you a valuable question you know um how important is it to give back to people when you have you know because i hear you said something important the more you give you know the more you get blessings back how important is that principle as a trader and just as a human in general as a human i would say it's like it's something that's actually good because obviously if you go to church you also learn about such mm. you, you should give you get because you can make a lot of money right yeah and someone else doesn't have something to eat out there yeah get? so like giving like in my in my on like on my end right giving yeah. makes me happy like just giving yeah like i'll be happy i was like i'll be like so you, you're gonna give me twenty thousand after the interview because <laughs> <laughs> if i give someone right 
I feel like I feel happy, and in my head, I won't, I won't, I won't be like I'm giving to receive, right? Yeah. But obviously, if you give, just if you principle. give to receive, I feel like you won't receive. But if you just give, for the sake of giving, because you also like helping people. Yeah. That's when you receive. Because when I, I would give people twenty thousand, and I would see myself in the morning before nine, I'm also making twenty thousand. Mm. So I'm you like, get it back. Yeah. So I'd give people. Anyone who asks, I'll I'll give. Also, the securities. If you can go back where I was staying, oh, they like, buy. They all love me. Like they, they all love me because I was just. If I make profits, if they would know that I made profits, they all knew that I was a trader. Yeah. Right? If I make profits in my room, next thing I'm going to Campus Square and buying them food. All of them. Food like groceries like, or no, 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 like food like, like lunch, lunch yeah. like lunch. I'll buy them lunch. Also buy people like you know like where I was staying. People like. Who stay there, they have money, right? In yeah. the sense that they come from like good family. Good background. families, yeah. But then I would also like, I'm at the deck there. If I see that, I would, like, if I'm chilling with you guys, yeah. I wouldn't just eat because there's a restaurant yeah, there. Yeah, I wouldn't just eat alone. I would buy for everyone. Nah, that's, that's a good Even if principle. they didn't ask, I would just buy. If yeah. they don't want it, then I'd give it to someone else. Yeah, nah, that's so, good. Yeah. So that's clean. So you just knew that if you go back to res, you know, you, you're not even pouring petrol into that M4, you know. So yeah, I was like, ah, I'm not getting this one. <laughs> yeah, so, and then you you left the dealership and then you continued trading. How did, what happened after going to the dealership? You know, because that's a good mindset. Most traders, you know, I'm sure you are coming from that mindset of like, hey man, you've made profit and you want to impress people, you know. Yeah. I'm sure that's the mindset behind. Yeah, I wanted to, to impress people because people would say I'm trading demos. So I was like, let me impress people with buying a car. And yeah. I was like, nah, I, I don't actually live for those people. Mm. That's when like, like I would ask for advices from my mom. Yeah. Because my mom would tell me, you can do this, do this, do this. With the profit you, you have. Yeah, with the profits that I have. Yeah. So I also started what, investing into some like small things. Obviously, they were not making that much money. Yeah. And some of them, like, they closed, right? Yeah. And I continued with FX. Yes. So around... Around... Now, when I went back home... Because yeah. I was like, if I buy a car this side, I have to drive back home to go show my, my mom. Your mom, yeah. So I was like, no, I'll just buy a car when I'm... That side. That side. Back at home. So initially, I wanted to buy a car, like, around the 2nd, 3rd of December. December. But I ended up buying it like towards end of the year. Yeah, end of December. Yeah, I went with my mom, my siblings. Like, yeah, it was just like something that was inspired. Yeah. And then, yeah, I want to know now, while you were trading, what happens with school? Are you still going to school? Because I remember there were times where you like, Ish, man, I don't feel like going to school. From the YouTube times, from when we were recording videos, you know, and YouTube, you weren't making, I'm sure you weren't even making money at all from YouTube. Yeah. But now there's Forex, you're making profit. Are you still going to classes? Are you yeah, still going to university? still go to school. Doing my second year in computer science and informatics. Nah, that's yeah. clean, that's clean. So first month, second month, third month, I'm sure you, so on your third month, I'm assuming you got consistently profitable. Not at consistent. which point, how long did it take you to become consistently profitable? took me like three nah three three and some days three and some weeks three months and some weeks oh three months and some weeks yeah so it's from december december the whole of december i, I only made i only uh, got losses on cpi but all the other days i was making money so you trade every single day of the week i trade every day monday to friday monday to friday you know what's advice for because you trade only currencies now nah? so uh, there's this thing going on in the industry where people are like focused on US 30 and indices and you know just hearing from your side that you mostly trade mostly or only trade currencies you only trade currencies now like how do you feel about people saying that there's no money in currencies because a lot of people like currencies are slow for them you know how do you approach currencies and how like, what's your thought process behind currencies? Okay, so, like, in a sense, they are right that currencies have less profits, right? Yeah. But not to say that currencies don't have money. Like, there's a lot of money in currencies. Yeah. And there's less risk you get. Mm. There's less risk in currencies than indices. On indices, like, there's a lot of money with a, a minimum lot size of 0 0.01. Right? 0 0.01. You can make... 
a lot of money. But on currencies, for you to with 0 0.01, when someone on indices with the same movement, someone on indices is already on 1,500, you yeah. are like on 13 rand. 13 rand. rand. So this is how I approach currencies. Like, the minimum lot size that I can use on currencies is 0 0.05. 0 .05. For me to match up with what it indices, but with 0 0.05, I can match up with a 0 0.01 on indices. Yeah. So I enter plus eight trades if I see a movement. Oh, so what you do it? Um, so for those traders who do trade currencies, listen closely. So you're saying you match up the lot sizes on currencies with like an indice, you know? Yeah. And then you trade it. And even if you match it up, right, on currencies, it's less less risk less riskier risk. than what's this uh indices because yeah. it's a 0 0.01 you can go straight into like minus 150 but with with eight trades of 0 0.05 mm. especially like usdj what i've seen you can go to like minus 15 rand but yeah. when it comes into profits we're the same mm. yeah yeah because you call yourself the king of usdjpy man <laughs> Yeah, that oh. thing has made you money now, nah, I'm sure. USDJPY. Like, like a lot, eh? Yeah. Like, I, I made a lot from USDJ. A lot. Yeah. A lot, yeah. So give advice, uh, strategy advice to um, people who trade currencies. You know, should people stick to like maybe one currency, five currencies, or do you trade them all? Because, you know, some people, let's say they trade 10 different things, you know, they end up getting confused, you know. So what advice would you give to people, you know, in terms of the way you've managed to become profitable? I mean, like, if you have a strategy that works, right, you can enter anything, like anything that you just open. If you hear someone saying, yes, these are, you can just go and analyze. Hmm. You get an entry. Same thing. So you only trade, because when you walked in, you said you, you, it's your first time trading USD CAD. Yeah, USD and you CAD. just made how much? Like 70. Like 70,000 Rand as we were walking in, you and know. And it's my first time trading it, like. If your strategy works right, it works on anything. What's the strategy, bro? Give us the mm. strategy, like. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something that, that's on the internet. As yeah. I was saying, I combined like, a, like different strategies and also like looking how people were getting entries and mm. how people were losing. So this is how I came to a point. Nah, that's clean. So uh, let's talk about baby finisher. The car's literally parked there, you know. That one, could you afford to uh, take it out the dealership without, you know, stressing about petrol? How did that purchase come about? Because it's a beautiful car. Congratulations on that one. Thank you very much. Yeah, man. So how did you, like, what was your mindset buying the, the Benz? The Benz? Yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> I want, initially, I wanted an E45 S. A45 right. is. So when I went to Mercedes, right, uh, the first day that I went to Mercedes with my mom, it was not there in stock, right, in Bulukwan. Yeah. So they had an A250, right, like the latest A250, the MG, the, yeah. Yeah. Then I inquired on that one. But in my head, I was like, nah, this is not the same as an, as a what? Uh, M4. A, A45. A45, yes. yeah. So I was like, nah, let me just, for my first car, let me not go all out right because also maintaining that car is going to be something that's huge because you know with mercedes-benz service goes like thirty thousand, <laughs> right if you're not under a motor plan right yeah uh so i was like nah let me just go for it. this car because it was the one that was in stock right because that a250 someone else took it the following day like, yeah from the day that i went just inquire about it and yeah when i bought that car i was like i only i was happy yeah in a sense that i was happy that i bought a car but i'm not broke because mm. i saw I you can, swipe cash there. yeah because i was like if i buy this car i can still buy the same car again tomorrow mm. yeah so how important is it to have like financial backing you know for those people um who have made money in the markets and want to impress people how important is it like to to minimize instant gratification and have that discipline of hey man i'm just going to continue trading until i have x amount you know until i can actually afford to you know make purchases like that how important is it for people to delay instant gratification especially in this industry where we're making so much money bro so like okay in a sense that's 
um let's just say you make a million yeah right it it comes with a good example that when i made like money that was enough for me to get an m4 yeah i could have bought the m4 but that's not a good financial decision yeah decision because you buy something next thing you fall off Ish. but you bought something that's expensive but now people are seeing you that car is parked or that car is no more working you get <laughs> so in my head i was like nah I have to have at least a fallback, right? If Fall I'm falling back. back, I'm falling back into money, not like falling back into losses you get. Yeah. So this is when I like saved up, saved up money. And yeah, but buying a, buying a car in, in the Forex industry, it's quite a good motivation. Yeah. Because when I bought a car, I started making a lot of money. Mm. From the day that I bought a car, following morning, I was now making around 30, 40,000. 30, 40,000. In a sense that's, I made the money that I bought the car with within two weeks. Within two weeks. Because I remember you told me that, like, I think we were on a phone call last week. You were like, you held USDJPY and you were holding like 600,000 or something like that. Yeah, from 755 rand. Okay, let's let's break down that trade. Yo, bro, this guy's, yo, dog, that's crazy, man. Some people have been trading for years. They don't even get to see that, you know. So you said you were holding 700 rand. 755. 755 rand? Yeah. To? To 682,000. 682,000. So you can just say that the car bought it with 755 rand. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, you know, and when I show these people the flips, it is possible. So break down that trade, man. Like, what were you doing? How long did it take? What were you trading? I was trading USDJPY. USDJPY. Yeah, that's when I got the name US, USDJPY King. King of USDJPY. Yeah, I was just, I, I saw a long term buy. Yeah. On which yeah. time frame do you usually analyze? On USDJPY, I can analyze on any time frame. USDJPY, I can just open the chart and tell you that this is a buy. Yeah. Or I can just look at it, then later on, I tell you that buy USDJPY without looking at the market and you get into profits. Mm. So you took those trades on USDJPY? Did you keep scaling in or it was just one trade that you I held? Was, I kept on adding buys. Adding buys? Yeah. Oh, that's clean, man. So right now, let's, let me ask you a few um, Forex related questions in terms of the technical side. You know, um, what time frame should traders use, you know, if they want to crack currencies? Which time frame is best for a day trader? One hour time frame, then you enter on the five minutes. On five minutes. Yeah, you time get your, your entries on the five minutes time frame. And then is there a session? Do you trade in any particular session, like the London session, um, New York uh, session? With London session and New York session, with the analysis that I do, right, you mm. can see the movement of London session or the movement of New York session, right? Yeah. Like in the morning, because I start off my day around 5 a.m. 5 a.m. Yeah, but I sleep early though, like around 8, 7 in some cases i also miss fmc because you're sleeping, sleeping. Yeah. yeah like today it's fmc i don't know if i'm going to miss it i might <laughs> yeah but you said you lose money during events so walk us through um so you said london session for that question mainly and then second thing what's your daily routine as a trader because you know as a trader you need a balanced lifestyle you can't be on the charts 24 7. so what i do uh when i wake up in the morning right <laughs> yeah i wash my face brush my teeth um 5 a.m nah. yeah 5 a.m yeah wash my face brush my teeth right which call which which brand colgate <laughs> since <laughs> <Aqua> fresh <laughs> since the dine then um <laughs> I, I go to my office just open like five different currencies yeah right? analyze the same way i analyze the same way on every currency right with your strategy any currency i can just search any currency just analyze 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 and just leave them running waiting for like proper entries in a sense that i can get like around 18 entries in a day 18 18 uh um, all five oh all, all five so yeah. just break that down so 18 entries on each pair uh, no, on like all of them. Oh, so you can, oh, so out of the five um, pairs, you can find 18 different 
opportunities yeah, like, and yeah. setups to actually make money. And yeah, we can just say like I can get eighteen to twenty, mm. and we can just say around. Let's just say to be realistic, we can say, okay, back then, but now we can just say all eighteen will be profitable. Mm. Yeah. So most of the directions that you trade um, on the currencies are profitable. That's clean. So yeah, on currencies. So you wake up in the morning, brush your teeth, analyze. How long do you take to analyze each pair? Mm, like I'm gonna okay. I wouldn't know like each pair, but all five. I would finish like in like 15 to 20 minutes. So 20 minutes of analyzing the charts and then... Then we, after that, um, it's, yeah, I go back to bed, <laughs> wake up again, also wash my face, brush my teeth again. Serious? Like, no, are you yeah, joking I or are you braces, serious? I, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> so brush my teeth again, right? <laughs> after that, then I just chill. And wait for entries around 8 a.m i know that i have entries i have like proper entry that's when i start sending my client signals client signals around eight mm. so we, in a sense that when we get to like nine o'clock right someone has already made like eight thousand eight thousand ten thousand and how much are these people funding let's say someone wants to make let's say a, a, a target of five thousand a day how much would you Okay. suggest they fund in if they trade in currencies okay, to be realistically right? like okay in, in real life you know making money is not easy right it's not so easy. Uh, i wouldn't say i'm not that trader that will tell you that uh trade with me fund 500 and you make ten thousand. yeah that, like that's, that's hard like a few people can do that mm. right that's if i can do it i can i can say that if i give you signals you're going to do it yeah because obviously the psychological parts can hit you if you're going to losses you close those losses Ish. but someone that knows the hold to make that money so i would say uh if you want to make five thousand every day at least if you find like to be like for you to get 5k every single day like to be consistent cause, yeah, yeah i can say you can find like fifteen thousand. Meaning, or fifteen thousand. Meaning, uh, from fifteen thousand, you're targeting like five thousand. I don't know how much percentage is, how much percentage that is from like the initial capture that you invested. Yeah. Meaning, like you know, like every day you can make five. So 5, it's like around points. thirty, thirty percent. Yeah, 30. I target like thirty to forty percent of what I invest. When I make times two, it's also like a bonus. So in a sense that you're making five thousand every day, there are twenty trading days in a month. Mm -hmm. So if you say five thousand times twenty. That's like how much? Five times twenty, two, four, six, eight, ten. That's hundred thousand. That's hundred thousand. Yeah. It's like a doctor's salary. Mm. Yeah. And you make over that target in a month. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> hey I man, that's beautiful. Me. So after that, you how do you long? How for how long do you actually hold your trades? Do you swing? Do you uh, scalp? What What's your trading style uh, actually? I swing, but. With the way, like with the with my strategy, yeah. I get like sniper entries in a sense that I go full margin. You go full right? margin. So with full margin, right? In my head, I'm telling myself that a broker might not pay me, right? Ish. If I hold it for the whole day, because that's going to be like a lot of money. Yeah. Because I can. Have you ever calculated how how much you could have made, you know, if you decided to hold for the whole day? Because right now, bro, like. You were also mentioning up like psychology because when I called you saying I'm outside, you were holding eleven thousand rand profit, and then when I went to you, it was at back at two thousand, and then when we walked in, it was at negative two thousand. But you you kept that psychology and you ended up closing twenty k on both accounts. You know, yeah. that's beautiful, bro. All right, so right now I'm just gonna ask you quick questions. You know that the people are interested in finding out. Um, first question, what's your most memorable trade? A trade that you'll never forget, you know, a trade. Actually, first start with your breakthrough trade, you know. The 10,000 one. 10,000, oh, from 300 to yeah. 10,000, right? And then your most memorable trade where you are like, I uh, hear, you know, you feel like your skill is on lock. It's the 755 for one. 600 and 682 682,000 and also the 139 to 112 oh, 130 so some of, oh, so that first trade when your girlfriend's bank account 
So you finished a bank account and then you made money. That's clean. And then is there a trade where you took a loss that you are like, hey man, yeah, today the market showed me flames. What's your biggest loss so far? In one trade. In one trade. It's like eighty-three thousand. Eh, what happened that day? As as aiming. Where did you take it from? Sorry to cut you. Where did you take it from? I took it from five hundred rand. Then it was on eighty-three thousand. So in my head, I'm taking it as eighty-three thousand. But when I blew it, it was not eighty-three thousand in my head. Cause I was aiming for this is when I was saying NAS hundred. NAS hundred. Yeah, yes, tech. So I went full margin, cause I saw an end. <laughs> what I saw was opposite. Blew that money, cause I was aiming for like two million. In that one, tr so you wanted to push eighty-three k to two million, right? Yeah. Because I was seeing a movement, I was like, I'm making two or three million. Yeah, I'm going to buy a mansion. <laughs> <laughs> then hey, I blew it. You blew it. So did you learn anything from that trade? Is there any lesson you took yeah, away? this is what I learned from that trade. Yeah. Um, I should not trade indices. <laughs> so I, that's why I trade currencies. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I trade currencies because indices, yo. I've lost, I've lost the man that I've lost from the charts is from indices because I've lost around close to 200,000, which is like I can say it's like eight to ten percent of what I've made. <laughs> yeah, eight to ten percent of what you've made from Hey, yeah. bro, that's that's really a hey man. Shout out to that loss, it taught you a lesson not to yeah, trade so indices. Now, I, like, I trade indices when I'm with people, like, we can analyze together. Even if I see something, I won't be so confident to tell people that, yeah, this is a buy. Or oh, you're not confident in Yeah, indices. but I can actually get, like, proper entry for indices, but to have that confidence, nah. Yeah, now nah, that's clean. And then, uh, I think, question that I'm gonna, you know, wrap it up with, you know, uh, where do you see because you've been trading for seven months and you've come this far you know where do you see yourself um in the next let's say by the end of the year you know i might not be trading by the end of the year why i'm investing in like big things yeah 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 like i'm investing in big things so i'm just trading for the meantime yeah so maybe <laughs> so you, maybe maybe now but like this year i'm trying to get like a v, v300 and a 911 yeah and maybe next year mention yeah. yeah so this year i'm just targeting like those things because obviously already this year i already bought like an apartment it's the apartment we in yeah clean bro that, that's beautiful hey guys that's been your boy peace finisher you know do you have advice for traders who are starting out or someone who's looking up to you or someone who's saying that forex is a scam because you know i remember you said at the beginning of the interview you thought this thing was a scam mm -hmm. now you know <laughs> yeah at first it's a scam to everyone but like if you keep on pushing like even if you blow no matter how many times you blow keep on finding that account continue do the, do the same thing over and over again every day like there's a day, there's a breakthrough, like there's a day. It might be tomorrow, it might be after two weeks, it might be after three weeks. But usually, if you're a serious person, I think two weeks is a lot, eh? <laughs> two weeks is a lot. Of people no, are, but we're dealing with some people, bro. Like, I no, like, if they can, like, even if you're trading, like, for six years, eight years, you can come, come to, like, to, uh, you can take your, like, yourself to a point that, like, you see that I'm t actually starting to learn how to trade today. Mm. No, don't put that mindset of like six years, mm. someone seven months. Just say what I was doing for the past years. I was not doing anything. Like, yeah. Just take it. Like, just refresh. Learning from like from scratch. Yeah. You don't know anything. Just take it in that sense. Meaning like what you what you knew. Just erase it. Start something that's good. Nah, that's yeah. really good piece of advice. Peace, poison. It's been beautiful having you. Um, for some people, man, the story. It's crazy, man. I won't lie, man. It's a crazy story, you know. And what you've accomplished in the seven months, you know, I'd like to say congratulations. Keep pushing, bro. And, you know, there's someone watching out there who's really inspired. I'm inspired personally, you know. But it's been beautiful having you. Um, so, traders, um, 
I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Um, we're coming back with the interviews, but other than that, uh, where can they catch you? Do you offer any signals or where can they, the people find you? Someone wants to learn, where can they find Peace Finisher? On Instagram, Peace Finisher or Finisher FX. I have a business account, Finisher FX, but I usually respond to DMs on the main account, Instagram, Peace Finisher. Yeah. Yeah, that's my only Instagram account and the business account. The rest, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, and it's verified for those people who possibly get scammed, you know. Yeah, guys, he's peace finisher. But anyways, guys, it's been beautiful. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next um, episode or the next video. Traders, have a good trading week and peace out. Guys. All right, guys, so we're literally done with the interview. Um, usually interviews you don't see like these type of things but we're just gonna go check out the whip you know how long have you had it for um, a month a month how, how is it a month and a half how, how's the feeling man it's good eh? but then I'm thinking of getting a new one a new one yeah like next month ish but I'll still keep that one I'll oh okay now nah, that's yeah. clean. maybe next month or April around Easter around Easter yeah, that's if everything goes. So when you're bored, you just, you know, yeah, you like, just go to the dealership. <laughs> nah, not the dealership as such. Maybe buying clothes and also helping out people. Hey yeah. man, you see guys, that principle he spoke about in the interview of giving, man, that's important. Because the more you give, the more you receive. Gonna but take, it out. Take, take the baby out, man. Let's see, bro. Guys, that's what seven months of trading can get you, man. It's crazy. Say something inspirational there. <laughs> Say something inspirational. Guys, don't give up on whatever you're doing, whether it's FX, whether it's... Ah, uh, no, nah, let me not... Hey, Say it. it. Whether it's FX, school. you're selling anything, school. Especially school, guys. Like, at school, like, that's where you make money. <laughs> the money is at school. Don't give up. Just yeah. push, yeah. Yeah, nasty. Oh.